believe it. It's 2021 already. I'm late. Good morning, sir. Morning. I'll, I'll, I'll take one of these, Kate. I'll take this cake here. That's two pound, please. I guess it's all cakes a pound. Aye. That's Madeira cake. Oh. Aye. <laughs> This is St Ninian's Church, just beside Port Barentine, at, well actually in our beg. This was built around 170 years ago, but it hasn't been used for the last 20 years or so as a church. It recently sold as a private residence, and from what I understand, it was bought for £50,000. I mean, can you believe it? So cheap. But in here was a plaque to Henry Birdie Bowers who went to the Antarctic with Scott of the Antarctic. Unfortunately, he died there. He was born just across the water in Greenock, but his family spent a lot of time here. And he used to come to church here, and that's why there was a plaque to him. That plaque has now been moved to the museum in Rossi. He used to also go swimming every morning, so we'll have a look at where he would go swimming. This is our big point. And this is where Henry Birdie Bowers, in training for his expeditions, used to go swimming. So apparently every morning before breakfast he would swim from here over to the Glenburn Hotel, which is round the other side of Rossi there. But he would just take a straight line across the sea and back. But it's some distance. This is where Andrew uh, Bairn Baird first made a flight, the first actual plane flight in Scotland 120 years ago took place along this beach and Andrew Baird actually built his own aeroplane um, and he built it in Rossi. He was a local blacksmith. And as I said in a previous video, this was where Andrew Baird did the first powered flight in Scotland. So I thought this is an ideal place to try some levitation. It requires a bit of concentration, but we'll go for it. Concentration. It takes some concentration, but it's worth it.
This is a circle of stones near Ettrick Bay. We can see that there's the four stones here are fairly intact and then there's stumps of some other stones here. So in total there's an eight stone circle but we can see that it's quite clearly a circle round here. And from what I've heard, this dates to Neolithic times. I'm certain these stones were just as high. Probably over the centuries, farmers have come and taken part of the stones to build fields or whatever. But it's amazing how much of this still stands. And it shows it was definitely some sort of an ancient place of worship. I'm in the middle of another interesting circle, just at Ettrick Bay, and this is a lone grave here, which is for one man that used to be the landowner round here. Again, it's a very interesting story. James Hamilton is the only person to be buried here. He owned nearby Kames Castle and married Harriet Hamilton. This is her portrait. She was a cousin of Admiral Nelson's mistress, Lady Hamilton. She lived an extravagant lifestyle and James Hamilton blamed her for much of his debts. So when he died in 1849, he had willed that he be buried alone. So here we can find him alone. Just as well today's Thursday because this is reckoned to have also been a Viking meeting place. They've done some archaeological digs and so on and they've found some evidence going back to between the 7th and 9th century when this island as far as I understand was largely controlled by Vikings and it's thought that this may have been a, even a kind of a Viking parliament. When we look over here to, we've got the Kyles of Butte over here, we can see the waterway and then of course round here we can see Ettrick Bay and imagine that if they met here they would have a good view and maybe it was a convenient place to meet, maybe it was convenient for different sets of Vikings to all sail here and leave their boats. Whatever, it's a very atmospheric area anyway. And beside the present day Isle of Butte uh, Gin Company, but I'm sure it'll come as a surprise, it came as a surprise to me that this here behind me is the site of the first Dobie's Garden Centre. We can see the church here which also features in the original advertising. James Dolby moved here in the 1870s and he opened his first nursery. Behind me is the house that James Dolby and his family lived in. This is at 30 Mount Pleasant Road, still in Rossi. I 
can't talk. N Nicola told me I can't talk. Oh, all right, yeah. Okay, right, what, right. What, what, what can I get you? Oh, that's a tenants. 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 Just one ten. Oh, but one, yeah, one, one. There you go, mate. That's uh, one pound ten pence, please. Uh, 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 God will pay. God will pay. God will pay. He's 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 on our band list. Really? Aye. No, don't worry. God will pay. All right, okay. Right. God will pay. God will pay. I hope somebody does. Right. God Almighty, how did that happen? <coughs> I don't believe it. Have you been to church today? Holy water. Holy water. Holy, holy ah. water. Holy water. Amazing. <coughs> Absolutely amazing. I've never seen that before in my life. So here I am at the grave of a well-known singer, Glenn Daly. He sang the song, the Celtic song, but he didn't just sing Celtic songs. Most of his songs were non-partisan and he recorded a famous album live at the Ashfield Club. He also sang songs about Rossi. He was born in Glasgow and he worked in the shipyards in Glasgow before he became a singer. But he ended his days here on the Isle of Bute. The sky is bluer in Scotland The grass is greener there too the air smells sweeter, the rivers are deeper, the mountains a lovelier view. And if you ever leave Scotland, the country of your birth, from your homesick rise you'll realize it's a finest place on earth. It's the fun.